Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of DeLorean Tech, and today we're going to be talking about Dave McKean's Idle Speed ECU, which is a, a new updated version of the Bosch unit that was originally in the car. Um, idle Speed ECU, basically what that is for is to um, maintain a set RPM at idle so uh, the engine doesn't die when you're at idle. So it's keeping the engine running, and that is controlled by this little unit here. Okay. Um, Dave McKean has sort of redesigned the unit. Originally, uh, and this being the original unit here, and here's a Dave McKean updated unit, um, it's non-adjustable, meaning it's set at a single RPM, and I believe it's 775 RPMs plus or minus 50. Dave's unit offers the user the ability to adjust the RPM range um, using little micro switches inside um, the unit here. So, so um, like I said before, this is a sealed unit, can't open it up, um, but I'll show you what it looks like. So here's what the inside of the original Bosch idle speed ECU looks like. This is just a photograph of it. So basically you send in your old unit or a non-working unit and Dave McKean will upgrade that old unit to one of his microprocessor controlled ECUs. And what that looks like is this right here. So you've got these little pin switches in here. And I'll try to show you that. Um, each one of those controls the RPM settings. And they're very easy to set. You just take like a little pin and you just move it. Um, the other thing that Dave added to this was the capability to increase the RPMs by 100 whenever the AC system is turned on. And that's accomplished via this blue wire here. So you, the idea is that you connect uh, and Dave supplies a connecting wire. You connect that to the 12 volt power going to the compressor and that sends a signal here to increase whatever RPM set point you have by 100 RPMs. So Dave uh, wrote up a pretty good set of instructions. Um, and a list of features for his new idle speed ECU. Um, some of the enhancements include uh, the ability to turn off the idle motor when the engine is not running or the RPM is above 1500. That's supposed to keep the uh, idle motor cooler and it does cut down on a little bit of the electrical load. Um, you can also remove the idle switch um, so was, there is less force required to close your throttle plates. Um, you may also see some small uh, mileage increase um, because at above 1500 RPM, the idle motor is held fully closed. Uh, another enhancement, uh, it, like I said before, is the air conditioning idle bump. Uh, here are the switch settings. And... So you've got switches one through four, and in order to achieve your desired RPM, and you've got uh, choices ranging from 775 all the way up to 1,000, and then you have this test setting. Okay, so the switch configuration um, is set right here. So you can see from left to right, you've got switches one through eight. And in the on position, uh, these switches are up. And in the off position, the switches are down. So I have mine set to 850. So I've got switch one and two in the on position and switches three and four in the off position. So you'll see here, um, on Dave's chart, 850, switch one on, switch two on, 
switch three off and switch four off. Okay, and you really could set it to whichever uh, RPM you desire for whatever purpose that you may have. Uh, this test mode, um, the test mode, according to Dave, will slowly swing the idle motor from full close to full open and then keep repeating. Um, this is sort of a uh, diagnostic tool, I guess you could say, that allows the user to kind of visually check the motor, the idle speed motor for sticky operation. Uh, there's also a delay that you can add. Uh, so the delay um, can be configured for longer delays to smooth out an idle that may be hunting. So part of the, I guess the, the main benefit, one of the main benefits of the idle, new idle speed ECU is to troubleshoot hunting. Okay, and hunting is really the uh, variation in engine RPMs. And this will help troubleshoot that if that is an issue for you. So let's go ahead and install this in the car. So here's a location of the idle speed ECU. And it's really easy to remove. I've got a couple hot harnesses here. You just pull those out. And then just unscrew these two screws that are holding it down. Okay, so here we are installing the new idle speed ECU. It's basically just the reverse of what you did to remove the stock idle speed ECU. And again, you've got to just re-plug in these, these connectors here. And then you just screw down the unit. Right, and that's basically it. Aside from connecting the the AC RPM bump wire, you can actually just operate it without doing that. That's pretty much an optional feature. Um, I'm going to be installing it um, in this vehicle, and um, I'll do a uh, sort of a demo and, and show you guys the the idle bump the 100 RPM idle bump uh, when turning on the air conditioning system. Dave has supplied some wire for that with a connector that you will connect right here. And there's a couple different connection points that you've got to work with. Uh, I contacted Dave and he originally recommended that I connect the wire to the pink wire coming from the compressor into the relay compartment. And um, the other option is to wire it directly to the compressor, which is what I'm going to do. And here's why. I do a lot of AC work on the car, and when I'm diagnosing the compressor, a lot of times I'll jumper it to a 12 volt source. So while I'm diagnosing the compressor, I still want to get that 100 RPM bump. So I've decided to just wire it directly to the compressor, and I'm going to be going through this little axis point right here so I'll basically just fish the wire through here and uh, tie it into the compressor power cable I'm gonna tie it into the red side right here with a side tap don't want to tie it into the pink wire because when I'm diagnosing the compressor I disconnect the power wire here and I want to want to have the rpm uh, bump wire, signal wire, connected here and routed through little access area right there. So I've got my blue wire. I'm just gonna run it right through there. And then 
just push it through a little bit. Okay, then I'm gonna go over here to the engine compartment. And here it is pulled through. Now, there's a little rubber boot right here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run the, you can kind of see it, it's like right in there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the signal wire through that little rubber boot and then reconnect that to the, uh, the engine wall right there. Okay, so I've got the blue wire through there. You can see there. Just go ahead and pull it through. Yeah, I just want to pull it through just so you've got enough to reach the compressor here. And then what I plan on doing is I'm just going to zip tie it to this line right here and then run it back down there just to clean it up a little bit. Okay, so the next step is to connect the side tap to the 12 volt power wire here for the compressor. go and now I want to strip the end of this wire and then you want to crimp it there we go just to make sure it won't pull. There we go. Run it like that. And get yourself some of these little zip ties. And for zip tie, I'll just put it right here. And I'm not going to tighten them down right now. I'm going to just get them on there and then do a final tighten once I. make one more side here down near the bottom so here's what you have so you've got your power wire your signal wire running underneath here and I'm just kind of tighten it up so you don't really see it and then I've got it running in here and I'm just gonna try to plug that back in. Some of the excess wire, I'm gonna just kind of fish that back into the cabin. Now to kind of finalize and tighten things up a little bit, Okay, so I've got my zip ties all tightened up. I'm just gonna move the excess on these zip ties right here. And there you go. So it's uh, nice and kind of tucked away, a little semi-hidden there. And that's the Completed installation. We'll take a look at the route. It's basically underneath this right here. And then down in there. Okay, so now that we have our compressor power wire routed into the ECU compartment, we'll just go ahead and, and connect these together. And all you do is just Plug it in and you're good to go. Just kind of route the excess wire and just kind of hold that in there. And then you're good to go. So there's the completed installation. So one of the challenges in getting a hold of 
one of Dave's idle speed ECUs is that um, unless you're going to send in your working unit, um, it's difficult to find an, an extra unit. You can try to get a Volvo unit um, or a broken unit. I was luckily lucky to have, have um, come across a broken unit and I, I paid 20 bucks for it and I sent it to Dave. And this is my original one, it's still working. I wanted to keep the original one. If you don't have an option, you could just send in your original one. Although if you try to buy an original one right now, it's pretty expensive. I think on DMC's website, they're over $300 and Dave only charges 125 for the upgrade. Um, you probably will never uh, go back to the original one, but it's not a bad idea to keep the original one, especially if it's in working condition. Um, because basically what ends up happening is Dave just guts it and takes out the old internals and just puts in new internals. Um, he maintains the pin connections here. So this is a nine pin original um, Bosch idle speed ECU. You could obtain a Volvo unit, which I believe are 11 pin. Okay, so you actually have 12 pin slots in here. So there's, there's an extra couple pin slots in the Volvo unit. Uh, and Dave can work with those as well. So if you, um, you know, can get to a junkyard or maybe uh, on eBay, a, a Volvo unit would, would also suffice. You can get one of those. Hopefully it won't cost too much and either have that sent to Dave or you can obtain it and then send it to Dave yourself. He'll take maybe a few days and, and turn, it, turn it around for you, um, get it back to you as soon as he can. Uh, the, the issue here is if you were to send in your original one, you wouldn't be able to drive your car um, until you get the um, the upgraded one back from Dave. So. Okay, so we'll go ahead and demo the RPM bump. So I'm just going to start the car up. So I've got the idle speed ECU set to 850 RPMs. So that's about where it's sitting right now. I'm gonna go over here and turn on the AC system. You can see the RPMs up went up a little bit by 100. There you go. So there's a little bit of hunting going on. But as you can see, the idle RPMs have gone up, so I'll turn off or I'll run the uh, AC here and I'll turn it off. So I just turned it off. The RPM should drop a little bit. There you go. So now they're back down to 850 from 950. I'll turn it on. And you got the bump. Turn it off. Back down again. And that's it. If you have any questions, just drop them down in the comments about the idle speed ECU. And that's it. Thanks for watching.